Republican presidential candidate John Huntsman is betting big on New Hampshire. He's been crisscrossing the state, hoping to overtake Mitt Romney, as Rick Santorum did in Iowa. But he's not going it alone. His three daughters are out on the stump with him, and they've become Internet celebrities in their own right as the John 2012 girls. Marianne, Abby, and Liddy Huntsman, good morning. I, I've heard you referred to as the three most famous sisters not named Kardashian in the United <laughs> States. Now, I want to give you a little bit of behind the scenes, how we, we get little notes about who's who to talk. And all I'm told is Marianne, shorter blonde hair, and Abby, the only brunette, and Liddy, longer mm -hmm. blonde hair. I'm so sorry, but I've been trying so hard. To lose you. So what's it been like? What's, well, what's your time? Thanks for having us yeah, on. Um, it's, we're happy to be here. It's going to be an exciting week. We're working hard. We've been here the last few months, and um, I think you're going to see a lot change over the next few days. And, and we've laid down the groundwork, and people are connecting to our dad's message, and, and we're having a great time. So his poll numbers didn't really change much after Iowa. I know that he's betting big uh, on New Hampshire. What do you think can change in the next four or five days that will get him the votes that he needs to stay in this race? Well, I think you, well, I think you see, like Mr. Smith was just talking about, polls really don't matter. They don't, I mean, I think a lot of people going into this race are still undecided when they go into the voting booth. But I think what we're really gaining traction, I mean, you see my dad's um, town hall the other night, there was just so much enthusiasm. People were just, you know, loving him. Sign everybody signed up, and, and we're seeing more and more and more people. He's on 150 events here in New Hampshire. We've gone to all of those, and we've just seen it grow, grow larger and larger throughout, you know, the event. So. I mean, you've grown up sort of in the public eye. It's not like politics are, are a particularly new realm for you, but I would imagine when you, when you get into the sort of presidential campaign level that this is sort of a different experience, if not somewhat disorienting at times. Right. I mean, it's definitely on a different level um, than it was when our father ran for governor, but, you know, you just kind of tune out with all of that and it's it's just been a great experience for us. Is What's it hard? So, is it hard to see? It's a family affair which has made it a lot easier for us because you kind of you clean together and you know that no matter what happens you're together as a family and uh, we know our dad. Despite what anybody says we know who our dad is and we know what he represents and I think that's all that matters at the end of the day. What's the best right. and worst thing you've learned about this presidential nominating process? I think the best thing we've learned is that anything can happen. Look at what happened in Iowa. It shows that the American people speak, and sometimes you can't control what happens. It's really a matter of, of a movement sometimes and what people are aching for. So let's talk about your videos, your approach. Sort of, mm -hmm. uh, I think you probably, for the Huntsman campaign, are responsible for the sort of hitting a different demographic in right. the social media. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about the videos and what you've all been doing. Well, I mean, I think we started the Twitter. We, we wanted people to kind of see, like, the backstage of what we're seeing. And I think people thought it was interesting to see a candidate's um, family, kind of what they see every day. And um, so, and the video, I mean, it's been such an entertaining process that we figured. <laughs> You're looking at something right now. There's a little bit of a... Um, Charlie Chaplin mustache? Right. I'm not sure what we got going there. That's Mark, that's Mark Block. People the, don't recognize uh, us without the mustaches, right? right. Um, you tried to get the Romney boys to play along, and they're kind of... They're still playing hard to get, but we're still waiting for them. We're still waiting for a response. That's not very gentlemanly. No. I know. <laughs> um, let's say it's uh, the Wednesday after the New Hampshire primary. Your dad doesn't come in first or second place. You're all sitting there as a family. What's your advice to him at that point? Well, we're coming in second or first, so... <laughs> but on the off chance that that, uh -huh. that, that, that doesn't happen. I think that's something you decide at the time. You know, that's not something you really can think about now. Right now, our focus is working the ground here and really trying to get people out to vote, and, and that's our focus. So we're not really thinking about that at this point. You know, your dad was here yesterday and was obviously talking about his optimistic view heading into the next couple of days. Is it hard to have these long days, 18, 20-hour days? You're out talking from your heart about your father, and then to not see the numbers move, does that get a little bit dispiriting for you? Of course it's hard, you know, but, you know, like we said, he is working tirelessly every day and he just celebrated his 150th event, you know, and that's all you can do is just work your hardest and, you know, you can't really look at the poll numbers until the very end. I think and what, so that's what we're really focusing on right now is not looking at the poll numbers, but just you know, working our hardest until the final day. And we know he's never wavered, and that's something we're very proud of as his kids. And, you know, I think 
We feel honored to be working on a campaign that we believe in so much. He's a man of integrity, of honor, and of honesty, and that's really rare in politics today. So whatever the polls say, we're happy with, with who our dad is, and that means the most to us. And I think it is interesting that there was a recent poll that found that Americans from both the right and the left consider your dad to be most in line with them ideologically than any other candidate. Uh, right. Does that make you wonder why it's not reflected in well, the polls, well, say, the here in New Hampshire? that's the thing about him is that he is a person who can bring people together, whether it's Republicans, Democrats, or independents. I mean, he won, a, you know, the governorship at the state of Utah with 78% um, of the vote and won over more Democrats than his Democratic opponent. I think and it's so also that really electability. Says electability. I mean, he's shown he's the only candidate out there to beat President Obama, and so you know. It's just getting through the primaries, which is what we're trying to get through right now. But he's definitely the most electable. Do you think you guys are going to stay in politics no matter what happens? I don't know. Have you found a future here? Ask us when this is all over. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know what the answer is. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for doing, doing a wonderful job with it now. Uh, you scheduled from here next couple of days? We're actually heading we're down to South Carolina. Carolina. We're yeah. going to you know, do some advancement work for our dad. And then, um, and then I'm speaking we'll be at back. a Nashua town hall. So we're all kind of split up doing different things. And, and you're on the uh, the internet for everybody to see where, whatever There may be some is. other things up our sleeve. We'll all see. Right. <laughs> Thanks so much.